G'day, how you going? I'm Ian Aplis, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video where I like to teach beginners how to paint in acrylic. Before we get started, I'll just get some sizes on the canvas there in inches. And also for your benefit, watching the replay as well, some colours going up the screen there. They're the colours I'm going to use. Now, if you don't have those colours, that's all right. If you're just a beginner, remember, not everything has to be has to, you know? You can use something similar. Your journey is going to slowly rise. You're going to slowly ride your bicycle through your journey. And then the more longer you're in that journey, the more you'll develop your craft. You'll work out what brushes work for you and also what colours you like to use. Every person teaching, like for this instance, using the colours I use, they're just what I like to use. But you might want to use something different and create create your own style in that aspect as well, all right? So I've got my palette down here. This is the actual first video I'm filming for 2021. I haven't painted for a while, but we're getting going now. So come on over here and we'll get started. Now on my palette, I've got some craft paint, student paint. You get that from the $5 shops, $2 shops, or even your art store. I'm going to put some retarder in it. This is pretty much going to make my magic surface to paint my skies. Now that's exactly what I'm using there. Just this stuff here, okay? Student. Find that in your craft shops. Big bottles of it. Art and craft shop. Now, and I've also got a couple of brushes. Me put her on a brush and a blending brush, okay? And these kill a lot of birds with the one stone. So I'll pretty much mix this up so I can paint the sky area. Okay, I've just sort of lightly sketched in where my horizon line and everything is. So I just want to put this in the sky. I don't need this all over the place because this paint with that retarder in it is going to stay wet longer. So look at this. Just put it on any old way. Crisscross it into the two for your canvas. Now, if you want to paint like me and like the way I paint, take note what I'm using. I'm using canvas cloth, not a canvas board or canvas paper. Every surface is different outcome. Now I just want to stroke that left and right and get all those, see all the big lumps, lumpity bumps in there? Just get all them out like that. It's real easy, eh? Look at that beautiful fun. There we go. And then the tip of the brush, here it's scratching. That's really blending it out. So the tip or to there. This is moving it along and then the tip on this brush, because of this, the hairs on it, they're quite good for doing that. Message me on Facebook if you ever want to grab the blending brush I use and this put her on a brush. Okay, these are the colours I want to use for me sky. You use whatever colour you really want, but I love cerulean blue. I've got some mid-tone grey out of the tube and over here hiding in the distance is a little bit of magenta. Alright, so we'll get the blue onto me put her on a brush and this is going to paint the sky color you don't need much you don't want it that color blue on your sky that color that's on there is going to tint this up a bit and i'll start in the top getting all that on there the white is going to help it it helps it see how the paint flowed in that it crisscross it all the way down to your horizon line all the way down to your horizon line and in doing that you're pretty much getting a kind of a realistic sky color okay now it's all on there crisscrossed you've pushed it all over that footprint that area that surface now we get this putter on a brush again and we're going to stroke it left and right and that's going to iron all the creases out it's like you bought a brand new sheet and you open it out of the packet and it's got all the fold marks in it and then you get your iron and then iron out all those wrinkles. There we go. Now just to put a bit of realism into this sky, we will put a bit of something down here. Now I'm grabbing that gray and I wanna get that down the bottom of the horizon line. Now watch this, just a eerily bitty kettle on sort of, yeah. Um, little bit of this, watch, just a tinsy weeny bit. Okay, get a very little bit into that gray, very little bit like that. Don't want it too red though, just slightly. And that can go on the horizon line area of your sky, which is the bottom part. So we'll just scoot that across there. My paint's starting to dry because I've had a computer issue and I had this, I haven't 
I had to stop everything. Now I'm going to get that, blend it to the sky there, okay? Just got a bit of realism there in the sky. All right, now we're going to grab some white. All right, I've got a couple of brushes for me clouds. I've got the blending brush over here and some putter on a brushes for the clouds. I like to use fan brushes. Now this is the good quality white out of the uh, tube there, not that craft paint. This is a good quality paint. And we just want to kind of get some, I want to, a cloud in the middle here some brightness so I'm gonna just sort of create the body of that like so with this but see how I've left bits of blue in there I've deliberately done that and I'll show you why I want to blend that with me blending brush put it down we're gonna get sort of blue and white now with this you need I'm using Chuck's kitchen towels get all this blended and turmoil very softly See there, you've got little whirls there you can see. Like so. And we're blending a cloud in the sky there. I just want to get all the edges nice and done like that. There we go. Now that blue sky is still quite it's not soaking wet but it's wet enough to allow that acrylic paint to blend the way that did see how that looks a bit turny turny on clouds don't look like that get some of that long ways there change them up a bit here we go now i've washed the brush and reloaded it i want to get some kind of other clouds within this sky so something they're not big heavy fluffy clouds okay these are just that color within the sky they're sort of bluey white i can even use this brush to kind of blend them but see you just push that around grab your blending brush and blend now it's up to you how do you blend you gotta i blend different ways you can work out how the blending is going to work for you this brush is the right temperament to blend the way i do my clouds i like it now i'd like to get all this really faded out here because this is just going to have some kind of glaring sunlight shining down through i'll get a bit more white maybe down here on the horizon here something with a bit of a top and it's going to feed into that gray color as well something up there see what i'm doing I'll let it participate off the painting and i want to keep the top of that but blend the bottom of it all the way down into our sky color those grays there blend don't just stop like that i always like to i don't know what you call it just get the end of it sort of done like that and this has gone all the way down in the gray tickle the tops wipe the build up wipe the build up get something check your clouds check the shapes see how they're looking all that's come down into that grey colour, sort of giving it a semi-realistic sky look. Okay. Now we'll get something over here, just any old way. I want masses of glare and stuff, something in the grey there. There, just like that. See what I've done? You can discover so many different cloud shapes in your art journey. Get the bottom of that nicely down there. Now that first bit I put in there, I want to add some yumminess in that just to create a light brighter source in the sky but this is just all those whispery clouds we have up there and if you want you can even this just sets things back watch put something with a top on it with a top on it this could get covered up though with my trees see the top what i mean by with a top on it you leave the top there tickle it a bit move it along and then pull it down and you've left that top on it okay see what that just done now i've got my smaller brush my fan brush i want to pick up some of the um, titanium white and that bit in the middle i want to really get some great yumminess within that body of cloud okay and it's mixed with the blue sort of keep it within there and we're just going to sit this yumminess down okay we're going to sit it down. We're not going to blend the buggery out of it right into that blue there. We just want to sit it down. So see how I put it on? 
keep the luster of it, but just gently sit it down. I'm using the corner of the brush mainly. Sitting it down so you've got all that brightness there still, but it's just turning the lights on within that cloud. Over here. Over there. Wipe your brush, constantly wipe your brush because it's picking up paint. There we go, let's zoom back a bit and have a look at that. There we go, now I just want to get some rays out of that. So I want to get some kind of rays coming down there now, nothing too dramatic but something enough to notice. So I've got me putter on a brush, I've cleaned it and I've dried it, it's still probably slightly damp but it's dry. Now I've got me titanium white, I want to just lay it out like that so I don't get blobs in the brush. I'm getting the paint ready to put into the brush, okay? So we'll just wipe that on the table there somewhere. Now I just want to just get scratchy bits onto me brush, okay? Just like that. And over here, I can test. Yeah, they're a bit, they're not gonna come down in lines, okay? So what I'll do, I'll use the thinner paint. I'll try that, because it's gonna be thinner. Mm, all right. Now I want to kind of now I've given this a bit of a dry with the hair dryer, and I want to come down from all this bright stuff here, just all the way down there like that. Boom. Pretty much there. Get some more coming. Get a bit of the edge here coming. Like that. I want to leave a bit of a gap and get some more all the way from up here coming. So we've got to try and keep these at the right angle. Okay. A little and straight. Straight as buggery. Now we don't want any joining up lines like I'm getting. So we've got to try and get rid of those. Maybe just a little bit more from here. So I'm coming off and then on, boom. My goodness, try and make them straight. Now, I don't want to do too much more because it's going to hide the sky. Now I'm grabbing my small fan brush and I've got to join those sun rays back to the sky. So I'm grabbing the proper titanium white. Okay, I've got my fan brush. That paint's still a bit tacky. I'm going to start, because see that looks a bit too... Uh, I'm going to try and get this and... Follow the, sh the direction of those brush strokes and try and brush them into the sky with this brush. Now before I've done these rays, if you feel oh, I don't want to do that, you totally have the right not to do it, okay? There we go. This is going to... We're just slightly... Dampening the brush, I've damped it, I'm just wiping it, and it's allowing this thick gluggy paint to be manipulated. It's a good quality paint I'm using here. Now all we do is we join that to the clouds. So see here, it's got to be, I'll get that blob off there. So a bit here, I'm going to join that to the cloud there just so it doesn't look like it doesn't belong. Now I've dried it, but don't put too much on because we've dried it now and it's not gonna blend as easy. Just a very little bit. You can probably even use a smaller blending brush because we're just kind of adding those rays into the sky. See like that? So I use a smaller scrumbling brush. Where are we here? Let's just Get something there, a little bit, just a very little, very little, see? And blend the top of that that you've put on. Don't do too much at a time because we've dried the sky and you can have trouble. Put it there, brush down and blend it up. 
All right, now next thing on my palette, I've got some turquoise already mixed up from a tub. And I've got a little bit of cobalt blue there as well. Okay, if you don't have cobalt blue, just use another blue. So we're just gonna get some darker values in that. And I wanna paint the water. So now I'm grabbing my putter on a brush and this craft paint left over from the sky, okay? And we're gonna prime up the water half of the painting. I've got my horizon line about there. I'm going to have land there. I don't want to paint this where the land's going to be. I've got there a bit of a blob. And get this all there so as we can get beautiful watercolours happening. Just there. Now, I'm not going to wash this putter on a brush. I'm smoothing that off. I'm just going to wipe it. So with a kitchen towel, just wipe that bulk off grab the turquoise now and we're just going to paint the whole water turquoise then we'll add the darker bits where we feel we need it so i'll start at the bottom put it on and then i'll start brushing it to the horizon line just like that pretty simple okay if you have another way um, you're more than welcome to give it a go i want these bits here dark no one there now let's rub that again and you're massaging it into that white underneath that helps it lighten up and become more of a realistic color. Now I'm using the tip of the brush there, not here, there. You can hear it scratch and I'm really ironing out that color, getting it the way I want. I don't have to come back with a blending brush. Now I'm just gonna wipe the turquoise out of there, pick up my cerulean blue not cerulean, this is cobalt, sorry. Let's hope this is a good colour. I've never used this before, first time. And I want some darker. So I'm going to stamp it on first. I want some here. Get it on there like that. Maybe some here. Stamp it on. Get it on there. There we go. Like that. Wipe your brush. See, that's easy. You can do it. Wipe your brush. And now start waterfying that. Look at this. Wipe your brush if you feel you're going to destroy it. Wipe your brush. Come over here. Wipe it. Wipe it. Now we'll come all the way and we'll just waterfy all that. We've got some darker elements in there. It's looking good. I might put just a little bit over here, wipe it, and then water fight. Manipulate your brush. I've turned it on its edge to sort of really force some of that in there. And that's just a simple basics water a beginner can do. This is looking from the water to the shore. Now I've got the craft paint on its own and I've got some water there, okay? I've got a flat toothbrush. And what I'd like to do, get that flattened down a bit, just like that. I put the toothbrush in the water, start in the water. Some people have seen me do this before. And then you start pulling it through, okay? And you just want the tip of this brush loaded with paint. You don't want it all in there, otherwise it won't flick. And we're gonna get some light and shimmer on our water surface. Now I've just covered the top half up and I want it mainly where my glares were coming down so as I don't get all this in the sky and I want to intensify way out there near the shoreline mainly in the middle pick up some more and start participating out to the bottom of the painting here like so get some light over there I'll show and then we're going to put some nice scallops on top of this to really give it a nice bullshit realistic sort of I like that painting type of feel about it you know so we're getting right out here that'll do it now I've taken my cover off I've given this a bit of a dry and we've got the the dark and the white I'm going to grab the darker color paint I'll probably get some of this turquoise and just incorporate some of that into the turquoise there just to create our darker color. 
And all we're going to do is put some scallops to highlight it. So it's like that shimmer we just put on there, but this is closer versions of it, okay? So you always need the darks under the lights. And what I mean by that is this bit here is way in the distance. So from about here, we can add, you know, bigger wave like top white. So we, we're going to do bits of scallops here and there just like this. Now, if you can find a picture, I'm just trying to go by memory here, but if you can find a picture that has this kind of aspect within the water, see it'll come about here. Because I want to put bigger white bits, but I can't just put it on there like that. I need these dark bits to make them stand out, okay? So we'll, that's why I'm putting this here. All right, and now we've got something to highlight. So now grabbing the white paint, I might put a hinder, just taint it a little bit with that so it's not pure white, okay? Just with the turquoise there, see the difference? You just don't want it pure white in my opinion. Now I haven't dried that, maybe I might have to, but we're just going to see now. I want to get all these white bits scalloped, leaving the darks there, just on the top, dragging bits of tails on it, like that. The first time I'm doing this, I mean, I've done skies before, I've done water before, but this actual procedure, it's the first time. So if I make a mistake, you're joining me with it, like that. Tail out like that, okay. Now I've just washed all the paint out of this brush and where I feel it's too blobby, I'm kind of getting this and just distorting it, but in a left and right um, in cahoots with the horizon line. Now I've just damped my brush in water, wiping it so as it'll help manipulate some of this. Because see, it's what I'm doing is pretty much scrumbling. See, getting rid of some of those ugly deliberate grade five looking brush strokes. Okay, now I'm getting the turquoise on my putter on a brush, because I feel I've made a mistake, and when I do, I can show you how I fix it up. Probably not a mistake in your eyes, but some of that that I've put on there now, it's sort of a bit, woo. so I'm kind of just, this is the watercolor there, so naturally it's gonna hide it and sit it back or whatever. So I'm getting this, and just left and right, just kind of going over it, and if I have to re Spray it with the toothbrush again while well, I can. But we're just kind of toning that down, sitting it down into the water. You know, like when you, you, you body stamp a cloud on the sky, then you blend it in? Well, this is kind of like doing that if you feel, I feel, because I said it was the first time I've done it, now I'm picking up some of the blue. It, it just didn't quite work. So I'm just picking up the blue now and scratching through there. There we go, how's that looking? Not too bad. And now I'll probably, I'll just try it. I'll get some of the white on its own and just see what that does on top of some of that. Scratch it through in from about there and then start scratching it through here, participating out. There we go. How's that looking in the monitor? That's okay. I might even just finish that off with some more of this shimmer. Just to sink it down. So there you go. I feel I made a dog's breakfast out of it and I turned it back into absolute bullshit. Okay. Okay, grab yourself a flat brush. I've got some yellow oxide and I want to grab some of that craft paint. No retarder in this. I'm just going to make up my sand color. So let's get that the value I want. And I'm just gonna paint it on with a flat brush. So I wanna come across here, I'm gonna have a small band of the sand. So I'm gonna use my stick. A lot of you know this is a bullshit stick. And this will just help me get a nice straight line. It doesn't have to be sharp and in focus though. Uh, we'll start up about here, right across the wall. This is so as I don't have to tape it on, okay? I've just got that right out there like that. Boom, I could take the stick away. You can see what a straight line it did. 
That's why I call it a bullshit stick, because that's bullshit how straight it just made that, eh? It's a, it's a better way of saying, wow, if it's the first time you're here on my channel, share, like, and subscribe. Get used to my lingo. I'm Ian Harris from Australia. I live on the west coast of Australia. And I love to show beginners how to paint. So if it's your first time here, share, like, and subscribe. Look at the links below. I've got over 370 videos, all different types of ways I like to show a beginner how they can paint a nice painting. The sort of paintings that make someone that walks through your house and when they see it, they go, wow, I like that. And if it's your regular viewer here watching me, do your best to share it onto your social media platform as well. All right, that's going to be painted over to get the size of it. I've dried it and I'm just getting a darker value of that now just to put at the very bottom of that sand line there, okay? Just so it doesn't look too floaty and pretty much let's just want a very darker bit at the very bottom here just like that. Oh, lovely. Look at that. And we can participate that up different values and heights along there. Now where me watercolour with the retarder went under this it makes it harder to dry so that's why I don't like to put that over the whole canvas if I'm going to paint in one sitting here we go now I'll just add some you know just like darker bands here just something to kind of add value to it so it's not all one dimensional there we go that'll do that will do it now with this cobalt blue, I've just added some of the yellow ochre and some of the magenta there, just making up a dark color here. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna put some little subject matters in the distance on the shoreline there. So meaning like, you know, people, people are out there, just the most tiniest little straight lines and dots. Nothing, come a bit lower with this, nothing too thick. That brush is too thick, so I need a smaller detail brush, which I have one there. There we go. I'll just wet it a bit, load it up with that paint that I just mixed. And we want some nice little elements of just, I don't know whether it's people out there. Well, it is people out there, all sorts of stuff. A bit more. I mean, we can draw boats, paint boats in here, oared and moored and whatnot. But these are just gap fillers within your painting. Now grab a bit of white. I'll just wipe that brush, wash it, get all that paint off it. And I'm just going to pick up some of the um, craft white. It's very inky. That's how you want it. And we can probably just minutely... put some highlights on what we just done there. Not too much, not on all of it, just all the big stuff. There we go. That's just something out there, okay? See that? Okay, I've got forest green. Little bit of this magenta. Let's pull that out there and let's get this magenta dark. I'll put a bit of water on my brush so it's going to be a bit more transferable. Get a bit more magenta on there. So it's just going to make a dark browny green colour. Darker than the green itself. Don't put too much magenta. Just gradually baby steps. A bit more water. Now see that water I have? If you'd like some of this water, send me a message on Facebook and I can send you a container of water like that. And it'll be uh, $1,674.95. Okay, it's great water. Now we're just going to map in the trees on our horizon line. Now, come up a bit from there and work out, I'm going to come high, low, and a bit here like that. So maybe here, leave some sky in the middle of it. Try and get the height first. Just roughly go the height you think you want to go a bit there. And I'll come maybe up here cascading that way see how easy that was and I'll do the same again so I want to come there leaving some sky in the middle of it 
and I want to come a lot higher now over here. I love these filberts because see I can do these sort of arching umbrella shape types. They just look great for a beginner to learn to do trees and shrubs. Now that's it. Now work out what you want left with the sky and then start coming down like so. I'll just show you here so a bit more darker and then this is all dark here. See it's participating out. There we go and then all from about there will be dark. And then we're going to bring that pretty much, where's our sand? There's our sand. So we're gonna come in a rough straight line. Now this straight line can come up and down, whatever, it's creating distance and uh, perspective within your painting. Okay. So, okay, I'm just stamping it on. It's creating an artistic brush stroke within the painting. Okay, and we'll get that a bit more neater as well, but I can do that off camera. Just finishing up this side here. I'm gonna use my flat brush to straighten that edge up. I was just too lazy when I was filming before to drop my filbert and swap over because <laughs> one of the hazards of painting when you're filming when you're painting is you always gotta stop and start and if you can not have to put something down and try and get away with it, you do. Or well, I do anyway. Get some umbrella bits up in there into the sky there, just so it looks fluffy and real. Okay, over here, I've just got some yellow green. It's just a green with some yellow mixed with it, but it's the actual color from the tube, which I have, yellow green. And I'm just using a small flat. And now in this side of those trees, so it's just not one simple pattern, I want to put some flat lawn area in there. So I'm going to use my bullshit stick just to create some lawny areas like so. And then I can bring the some bushes just straight over it. Get it right down to there like that. Because on some of these beaches here, they have parklands and bushlands, all sorts. And we can probably put just another, I don't know, we can probably hide another little pocket here. So just something like that. Now what I'm doing, every coat I'm doing here, I'm drying it. And you want dark between this and the other stuff. So I need this to come to a point like that down to a point there like that and give it a few coats as necessary so pretty much just like that it doesn't look like much now but when i detail those shrubs and bushes over it you'll get the gist of what i was trying to do here now i've got some forest green again and some cad yellow so i'd like to just pull them out that i want and start just highlighting some of those greens well, not those, the green that I put on there. We want to highlight it, but keeping the shadows within the right area. So I'll get some of that beautiful water I've got there just to inculate that to make it more transferable. And you want to keep dark between the bottoms of everything. So we'll put some of this there. come over that see how I've done that it's a different green and we're pretty much going to come along now you can put a whole bush here if you want just keeping some darks under that lawn that we put there okay a bit more it's important to keep the darks there and even within the middle as well. And just try and make shrub bush types of um, foliage that you've got here, leaving darks where they meet. Just like that. Coming along here. But now this, you definitely gotta have dark between that and the sand if you don't it's going to look a little bit like hmm what's wrong with your painting you know it's going to have that what's wrong with it kind of look so do your shrubs where you want them 
like that. And this is going to be highlighted again to really add that bullshit flavor. Wow, this is so easy to do trees and shrubs okay just watch what i do see how i stamped all that darker color on first you can do that that's something you do just practice it when you're watching a painting tutorial and you're a beginner don't think well you got to paint the whole tutorial i mean the whole painting practice what's in that painting then when you get in the knack of it bang you put it all in the one painting there are a lot of people out there i was guilty of it just want to do a full blown painting straight away. Coming off the painting, what you. There we go. I've dried that. Now, with just what's in my brush, I'm going to start mixing the yellow now, the CAD yellow, just with what's left in the brush. Okay, so we're going to get a nicer lighter value of our green it's pretty much that yellow green there um, mix your own or buy a tube if it already mixed now i'm getting it all out of the brush there see so i don't get any surprises and my goodness you can have so much fun painting grab some of that wonderful water again just to inculate the paint so it'll transfer from the brush on to the canvas now it's important to sit this over our field there the way i was telling you now goodness me i don't want this to clash with that one there let me just look at it it is a little bit so i think i'll go a bit more yellowy a bit more yellowy just so it doesn't clash with that lawn and you want to sit this over the lawn now leaving darks there how's that looking mm. a bit crissy crossy bring it over that lawn because when it's a different value see like if some goes over it you can notice it i'll fix this up here a bit see what i mean but you still have the black depth within it and we're going to have something here something there try not to go too much just work out what's looking realistic to you get something right here it's important to keep the dark between the two I feel just bring something over the lawn there yeah see we've just obscured it now coming to this side we want to just hit the tops of some of this now you got to practice this you do not want big thick see I went a bit thick there you don't want big thick heavy blobs if you can control the way you put your paint on with your brush you can do some fantastic bullshit oh thank you boy my son just bought me in a coffee now remember you don't have to go crazy all over it just bits here and there because we're going to add one more subtler highlight on top of this again to give it that um vibe the vibe of a good painting down here this is gonna come all the way over that shadow there oh yeah look at that i like it coming down here push that back with all this brighter bigger area there have a look at shrubs when you're driving past them and just memorize the shadow layouts how the patterns go and just transform that onto your canvas when you're painting that's all i do that's all i'm simply doing now oh there's that coffee my son made oh yeah i'm going to enjoy that oh yeah now i've dried all that now grabbing the yellow I've washed my brush, but it's still slightly contaminated. So I'm going to slowly incorporate some of that into it just to get a really bright 
highlight over some of our stuff there okay and you want these nice and fine and sharp if you can help it and the bits that are hovering over that lawn that's what I want to do just little bits just find the tops of everything there's another one there subtle bit there look in there yeah that's all right it's like conifer stuff I don't know if you know what conifers are but we have them here in Australia just tickle some of this over the lawn just to break the different values of green up that's why I'm doing this here over the lawn mainly all right don't overdo it though, just nice and sharp, fine little bits here and there. Really, and with these ones, you can really bring it over the black to really set things back and forward from each other. Okay, try not to put white in this. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There we go, not too shabby is it? We've got some sun rays looking at the shore from the ocean, okay? We've got some trees with some depth, bit of parkland there, little aspects of people there. And just remember, you can do that. All right, I hope you like this exercise for you beginners in acrylic. Check out the links in the description below. Share, like, and subscribe. And just remember, if you like what I do, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I do, you tell everybody, okay? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.